Hey guys welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto fell in love with Divine Odyssey Athena? Movie. Today just censored, Naruto thought to himself as a water dragon jutsu hit him and knocked him off the bridge. Meanwhile on Olympus, it was the winter solstice and as usual all the gods and goddesses were bickering, when Artemis sat ramrod straight with a look of horror in her eyes. Father I'm a ferret I must excuse myself from this meeting, Artemis said, trying desperately to hide the fear in her voice. Zeus nodded and told the other Olympians, this meeting is adjourned. With that, she bolted out of the room. Naruto I must get to him, she thought as she, quickly, hopped in her chariot and headed to where her son was. With Naruto, Naruto was calmly floating through a never-ending sea of black water. Well if this is death I guess it's not so bad, Naruto said to himself, it could be a little drier though. It was then Naruto heard the pounding of hooves and the squeaking of wooden wheels. When he looked up he could just barely make out the outline of a chariot, it was then a hand reached down from the chariot. Naruto quick grab my hand, shouted a voice shouted from the chariot, Naruto not seeing very many options grabbed hold of the person's hand. There was a bright flash of light and the next thing Naruto knew he was laying on a sandy beach with a painful throbbing in his head. What the hell happened, he acts, more to himself than anything. He then took a quick survey of his surroundings, palm trees, tall buildings in the distance, and the two girls on the beach. It was then rubbed his eyes and took another look. Yup define itly two girls, Naruto thought. He then looked them over. One was absolutely, positively, beyond any shadow of a doubt beautiful, she had black hair in waves down to her shoulders, piercing electric blue eyes, hourglass figure, a very revealing green two-piece swimsuit, and she looked about twenty-two. The other girl had black spiky hair, a shirt with a grinning skull that had lighting bolts coming from its eyes and mouth, a black mesh shirt with a dark blue undershirt, a pair of faded blue jeans that had holes in the knees, a pair of black combat boots, and she looked around 12 years old. Well whiskers you kinda showed up on the beach, said the punk looking one. Naruto merely rolled his eyes at the girl. You wouldn't know where I could find a messenger hawk would you spiky, Naruto asked the punk girl. The nickname caused the girl to get pissed. What did you just call me whisker face, the girl acts, it was then the smell of ozone entered the air. You heard me spiky, Naruto said, picking up on the smell but completely ignoring it. It was then the girl charged at Naruto. Naruto then quickly raised his hands and surprisingly caught the girl's punch. Both Naruto and the girl looked stunned at what had just happened, Naruto got over it quicker and chalked it up to his ninja reflexes. You're good whiskers, the girl said, Naruto merely shrugged. You still haven't answered my question spiky, Naruto told the girl. My name is Talia, the girl said through ground teeth. Naruto shrugged, and there hasn't been a messenger bird of any kind since World War II. Naruto looked slightly confused for a moment before he shrugged it off. Okay spiky, that was as far as Naruto got before Talia jumped at him. After a few minutes of wrestling around Naruto was pinned to the ground with Talia straddling his waist. It was then Talia leaned down. Pinned ya whiskers, Talia said, seductively in Naruto's ear. Needless to say Naruto had a blush start to creep over his face. Ah young love, said the other female who was smiling, as she looked at the spectacle. It was then Talia finally looked at the position she had put them in, and blushed. They quickly jumped apart the blush on Naruto's face growing deeper and Talia already having a blush on her face. The woman was smiling a killer smile and a new light seemed to come to her eyes. Sorry Mrs. Naruto said trying to figure out the other girl's name. Aphrodite, the other girl, now known as Aphrodite, said. Naruto nodded, before looking around again. So where am I, Naruto asks, looking around a little confused. You're Los Angeles, Talia answered, Naruto looked confused. Where's that? Naruto asked confused. The United States, Talia said again. Naruto was once again confused. Talia face palmed and shook her head. Land of the free? Home of the brave? Beat back the British? Any of this ringing a bell? When the look of confusion was still on his face, Talia looked about ready to give him a gib slap him. A. N. Basically she'll smack him on the back of his head. What's your name? Talia asks, trying to restrain herself. Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto announced proudly. You have a strange name, Talia commented, sighing. Not like yours is any better spiky, Naruto retorted, receiving a shock from Talia. Aphrodite couldn't help but giggle at the two's interaction. In Konoha, 
Kakashi was in such a foul mood right now, even Hades himself would have cowered in fear of him. He was on his way to give his report to the Hokage, when for the first time in twelve years he looked at the fourth's face on top of the Hokage monument and sighed. It was then his eyes popped open again and he took a good look at his sensei's face and began forming a mental picture of his sensei and compared it to Naruto's. Same blonde hair, same blue eyes, and the same facial structure, Kakashi thought, how the hell didn't I see it before? Kakashi immediately ran like the very Shinigami himself was hot on his tail, he didn't realize that a week from then how true that statement would be. He then burst through the door of the Hokage's office and sent the aged Hokage a glare that could have had the Furies trembling in fear. Why didn't you tell me? Kakashi asks, through ground teeth. Sarutobi looked at him a little confused. Tell you what, Sarutobi asks, the confusion showing in his voice. Why didn't you tell me that Naruto was Sensei's son? Kakashi acts, shouted. Sarutobi sighed before he pulled out his pipe, and for those people who knew who Kakashi's sensei was looked at the fourth's face and began making a comparison to him and Naruto and they immediately paled. I didn't tell you because then you would be inclined to adopt Naruto, Sarutobi answered, and then Naruto would have not only his father and mother's enemies, but also yours to deal with. Kakashi continued to glare at the Hokage, with a fire literally in his eyes, but he eventually got his breathing under control. Still you should have told me, Kakashi said, sighing shortly afterwards. Sarutobi nodded. Now I believe you have a report you wish to submit, Sarutobi asks. Kakashi nodded and began his report. When Kakashi was almost done with the report when he heard something that caught his attention. Kakashi could repeat that, Sarutobi said. Okay, Kakashi responded. Naruto was hit with a water dragon jutsu and was knocked off the bridge following that a silver chariot being drawn by white deer and a female about 18 years old was sitting on the chariot and pulled Naruto out of the water then they disappeared. Sarutobi sighed and rubbed his temples, she's come back. Who did? Kakashi asked confused. Kakashi was puzzled, to say the least, at the third's question. But Hokage-sama what's the goddess of the moon and the hunt have to do with Naruto's real mother? Kakashi asked a very confused tone entering his voice. Because she is his real mother, Sarutobi answered, before taking a puff on his pipe. Kakashi merely said the first response that came to mind. That's bullshit she swore to remain a virgin forever, Kakashi shouted, while silently he couldn't really deny the truth that was coming forward. But her father also told her that she could retract that vow at any time, Sarutobi countered, that's when the final piece snapped into place for Kakashi. You think she'll be pissed if she finds out how Naruto was being treated, Kakashi acts. Bah, was Sarutobi's reply, if she found out then I would expect Konoha to be burned to the ground and her to be dancing on its ashes. With Naruto and Talia about six months later, Talia were almost there come on, Naruto shouted over his shoulder, with Grover, a half-man, half-goat being called a satyr, bolting for the boundary line of Camp Half-Blood, a camp as you can guess made espically for half-bloods, Annabeth, a blonde-haired, grey-eyed, seven-years-old daughter of Athena, not far behind Grover. But Talia just stood at the top of the hill with a sad smile on her face. Sorry whiskers this as far as I go, Talia said, as she looked over the hill and saw the many horrors that were before her, I'll try and buy you guys some time. Naruto then got worried, you see over the past six months since he had showed up the beach in Los Angeles he had come to think of the motley group he was in as his friends and family especially Talia though he would never admit it. He then turned and looked at his fellow blonde Luke, a child of Hermes. Make sure they get to camp, Naruto told, Luke nodded solemnly. Naruto then ran and stood next to Talia on top of the hill. Whiskers go on get to the border, Talia ordered, that solemn tone still in her tone. No chance spiky, Naruto said, flashing her one of his patent trademark foxy grins, I can't let you have all the fun. Talia smiled slightly then did something neither of them expected, she kissed Naruto on the cheek. When she pulled away both Talia and Naruto were blushing, but that quickly subsided as a hellhound let loose a howl that was meant to send fear into its prey. When this is over you're going to owe me another kiss, Naruto told her, in a matter-of-fact tone. If we survive this whiskers I'll kiss you as much as we both can stand, Talia told him. Thus began the fight for their lives. Despite their best efforts Talia and Naruto wound up back to back fighting off the various monsters of the underworld, Talia with her Aegis shield and spear, Naruto with a pair of celestial bronze daggers. Despite their best efforts they both knew at the rate things were going that they would soon be dead. 
It was then a cry of pain reached Naruto's ear, he quickly finished off the hellhounds that were trying to attack him, he turned and saw that Talia was bleeding very badly. Naruto quickly bolted to where she was and killed the ten or so hellhounds that were surrounding her. Come on Spikey, Naruto said, you can make it. Talia smiled sadly and shook her head. You know I can't whiskers, Talia told him, just before she fell into a state of unconsciousness. Naruto tried to shake her awake, but nothing happened, and first time in a long time tears had appeared in Naruto's eyes, he then roared to the heavens in anger. He then looked at the monsters that were around, all of them either howling, yipping, or making a sound that sounded like cackle, it was then Naruto heard a deep thunderous voice at the back of his mind. Yes kill them, the voice commanded, they are the ones that took Talia away from you give into your anger and use it, to avenge her. Naruto didn't need any more convincing as he gave into his hatred. He then got on all fours as a blood red cloak enveloped his body. Seeing this all the monsters that were there looked in confusion at this new person. He had a blood red fox like aura around with one tail at the very back, but other than that it looked just like the blonde boy they were fighting. That was all they had time to think before Naruto was upon them. In a matter of mere seconds the cubified Naruto had tore through most of them, the survivors then got over their initial confusion and began to attack Naruto for all they were worth, apparently they weren't worth much. When Naruto had dispatched the last of their tormentors he finally willed himself to calm down and the Kyubi cloak disappeared. He quickly bolted over to the downed Talia and checked for a pulse, her pulse was faint but it was there. Come on Spikey, Naruto said, picking Talia up and carrying her bridal style to camp half-blood before he too collapsed on top of the hill. Meanwhile on Olympus, Artemis was looking at the scene in worry and dread, Zeus looked like he could care very little. Artemis wanted to do something, but knew if she did she would have to reveal Naruto was her son, Zeus just sat there drumming his fingers impatiently. It was then Artemis had an idea worthy of her sister Athena. Father you remember the great prophecy the oracle made, Artemis acts, Zeus merely nodded. Well think about it what if your daughter was the child of prophecy, Artemis acts, it was then a flash of realization hit Zeus like a horde of charging minotaurs. Yes you do have point Artemis, Zeus said and he cast a spell that turned Talia, and Naruto being in contact with Talia, into a tree. That should buy him time, Artemis thought to herself, as all the other Olympians cleared out she noticed that Aphrodite was still there. Spill, Aphrodite ordered. Artemis just looked at her funny. Don't play dumb with me Artemis I know there's some kind of connection between you and Naruto now spill it, Aphrodite told her, all the while glaring at her, Artemis sighed and relented. He's my son, Artemis told her, at that Aphrodite's mouth flew open and she pointed at Artemis. About an hour later Aphrodite was still in that postion and there were quit literally flies hovering in front of her mouth. Close your mouth you're attracting flies, Artemis told her, using one of the sayings that Minato had taught her. Aphrodite quickly closed her mouth, but she still was looking at Artemis wide-eyed. After two more minutes Aphrodite let a loud squeal and hugged Artemis, needless to say if Artemis wasn't an Olympian she would have died from the bone-crushing hug. I just knew you would give in to love sooner or later. Aphrodite somehow managed to squeal out. Artemis scowled at Aphrodite and shoved her away. It was a one-time deal, Artemis told her, the scowl never leaving her face. Artemis then stormed off. Four years later, Clarice had just returned with the golden fleece and was placing it on the tree that had marked the boundary between the outside world and Camp Half-Blood. She had heard the legend, honestly everyone in Camp Half-Blood had, about two demigods, one a child of Zeus and another that nobody knew whose demigod child he was, had tried to buy Grover Underwood, Annabeth Chase, and Luke Castellan enough time to get to camp. When she put the fleece on the tree and sighed with relief when the tree went from its sickly look to a healthy look, then a bright white light appeared and everyone had to shield their eyes. But this was the first noise they heard. Whiskers will you get off of me, shouted a female voice. I can't help that we landed like this spiky, shouted a male voice. Everyone was confused but Annabeth had a flash of realization. Naruto, Talia is that you? Annabeth acts. Percy looked at Annabeth in confusion, then at the two people who were wrestling on the ground like natural enemies. One had jeans ripped at the knees, black spiky hair, he assumed that's how she got the name Spiky, black fishnet with a dark blue undershirt, black combat boots, and a skull that had lightning coming from its eye holes and gaps in its nose and mouth, she looked about fifteen. The boy had blonde hair that defied gravity, three whisker marks on both his cheeks, 
Percy also assumed that's how he got the name Whiskers, a blue shirt with a fox on it, camo cargo shorts, and black tennis shoes. Annabeth couldn't help but laugh. The two who were wrestling around the ground stopped and looked up. Needless to say they were in a very comprising posture with the blonde pinning the girl to the ground by her wrists and he was also straddling her waist, they blushed and jumped apart. Annabeth is that you, the blonde, that Annabeth called Naruto, Axe. Annabeth nodded, the laughter finally subsided, and got a hug from the blonde. Percy didn't know why but he felt himself getting angrier at the blonde's interacting with his Annabeth. My Annabeth where the hell did that come from, Percy thought to himself. Naruto noticed Percy's reaction and decided to get in a cheap shot. Oh and is he your boyfriend? Naruto acts in an innocent tone. Needless to say the camp got a laugh out of it, Percy and Annabeth were both blushing as red as a pair of tomatoes and they're barely forming a coherent sentence. What, him, her, no, Annabeth and Percy sputtered out, Naruto and Talia eventually joined the rest of the camp and began laughing, surprisingly even Mr. D and Chiron were laughing at the two's misfortune. Talia, Naruto is that you, Grover, who just happened to be walking by, Axe. Grover I see you finally got your horns, Naruto said, clapped Grover on the back, Grover nodded. Had it for a year now, Grover answered. It was then Naruto had a flash of realization and smirked evilly. Oh spiky, Naruto shouted out, and then he and Talia began their wrestling match all over again this time with Talia winning. I win again whiskers, Talia shouted in triumph but then Naruto leaned up and whispered something in Talia's ear causing her to blush and then she shocked Naruto who still was grinning. Meanwhile on Olympus, Zeus was grinning imagining the glory he would receive if his daughter was the child of the prophecy. Now I just need a way to get my brother's child out of the picture, Zeus was thinking sadistically. Lil did any of the other ten Olympians, that's right ten Aphrodite was clued in shortly after she found out Artemis had a child, what Artemis was planning. Just need Talia to get off Naruto, Artemis thought. It didn't take long and Artemis began to secretly send down her sign, which would claim Naruto as her child. With the campers, all the campers had finally calmed down and Talia had jumped away from Naruto with a blush on her face from whatever Naruto whispered. What happened next caused the whole camp to look on shock and wonder. Artemis symbol, a silver deer with a bow and arrow behind it, appeared over Naruto's head. On Olympus, after Artemis's symbol appeared above Naruto's head everyone looked down at Naruto, up at Artemis, and back down at Naruto, as you can imagine all the Olympians had various expressions of shock. Zeus had fallen out of chair and landed in a very undignified manner. Apollo was babbling like a drunken idiot, Hera looked like her eyes were bought to come out of her head. Hephaestus had his mouth so wide open that you could have fit all of Olympus in it, Ares's sunglasses had fallen of his face and his eyes were really a innocent baby blue. Hermes who had walked in at the time was so shocked he actually walked right into a marble column and was co-ed. Poseidon had fallen out off his throne and almost impaled himself on his own trident. Athena was randomly shouting out something to the affect of who, what, but how the. Demeter had actually quit nagging about cereal and rubbed her eyes to make sure what she saw was true then she thought, I gotta lay off the grape juice. Needless to say Artemis and Aphrodite were having one heck of laugh about it. At Camp Half-Blood, all the campers there were shocked to say the least, Mr. D had just swore on the river Styx to stop drinking for quite some time, minus Grover, Talia, and Annabeth, at the fact that Artemis, who had swore never to have a child, had just claimed this blonde-headed idiot, and since they all thought that they wound up with their bows and arrows not working for quite some time. Well it's clear where we're going to put Mr. Naruto, Chiron said, and he along with all the campers walked to the camp. Hey Talia what was it Naruto whispered to you, Annabeth asked curiously, Talia blushed. Flashback, Talia had just pinned Naruto and was fixing to celebrate her triumph when he leaned forward. You still owe me a quite a few kisses, Naruto whispered, Talia blushed. Flashback N. NN nothing, Talia stuttered out, a very deep red blush appearing on her face. Annabeth knew something was wrong, I mean come on you aren't a child of Athena for nothing, but she let it slide. But Talia decided to get in a jab at Annabeth. So what about you and that boy named Percy, Talia teased, Annabeth blushed such a deep red that she could have passed for a stop light. Idd don't knkn know wa what you're t talking about, Annabeth sputtered. Right, Thalia said not really believing her. Meanwhile at a secret hiding place on Olympus. Athena was looking out over the city of Olympus from hers and Poseidon's hiding spot for their secret meetings. 
It was then Poseidon came in through one of the very few entrances to their hiding place, he then sat behind her and wrapped both his arms around her waist, Athena smiled an actual smile that she only showed around Poseidon. Hello seaweed brain, Athena said, snuggling into Poseidon's chest. Hello to you too wise girl, Poseidon said back, kissing the top of her head. A. N. Anyone besides brother Chaos and me noticing a pattern here? You know I'm starting to get tired of acting like I hate you, Poseidon said with a sigh. I know, Athena said back to him, she reached up and placed a hand on Poseidon's cheek which he leaned into. I think the only one besides us that knows is Aphrodite and that's only because she's the goddess of love, Poseidon said, kissing Athena's neck. Athena couldn't help but shudder. Why do you make me feel this way, Athena asks, already knowing the answer. Not sure, Poseidon answered, kissing her neck again then lightly nipping on it causing Athena to moan silently. Poseidon stop I have an oath of chaste I have to maintain, Athena pointed out, more out of necessity than anything else, Poseidon merely grunted and nipped on a very sensitive part of Athena's neck causing Athena to let out a silent scream of pleasure. After this point Athena didn't care about her oath of chaste, but Poseidon stopped and simply pulled her in close. That's one of the reasons I love you, Athena stated. What is, Poseidon acts. You're gentle with me, you act like I'm something breakable, Athena answered. To me you are very breakable, Poseidon told her, putting his head on top of hers. Athena sighed knowing this was one of those battles she couldn't win. For as long as they had been seeing each other Poseidon was always doting on her, always wanted to make sure she was comfortable before he did anything, and he never pressured her to do anything she wasn't comfortable with. She sighed and then leaned up and gave Poseidon a kiss on the lips, Poseidon was a little surprised but he returned the kiss. You remember the chariot? Poseidon asked nostalgically, Athena smiled at the memory. Yeah, Athena answered back just as nostalgically, we would have been done a lot faster if it weren't for all those make-out sessions. You know you loved it, Poseidon teased, Athena smiled before playfully hitting his shoulder. Poseidon then tackled Athena and pinned her to the ground. Nowhere to run, Poseidon whispered to her seductively in her ear, Athena shudder and Poseidon leaned down and began kissing along Athena's neck. It was at that moment Aphrodite and Artemis walked in on this makeout session. I knew it, Aphrodite shouted out like a schoolgirl, causing Poseidon and Athena to jump apart and blushed. Kay Kane knew what, Athena stuttered, both her and Poseidon blushing a bright red. Don't play dumb Poseidon I'm the goddess of love and I just walked in on you and Athena in a makeout session, Aphrodite told them in a stern voice. All they could do was sigh and then they confessed. Yes we've been seeing each other, Athena started. It's been going on for about 2000 years, Poseidon continued. After the chariot, Athena finished. Yay I just knew it, Aphrodite squealed then a look of confusion appeared on her face, then why haven't you gone public about it? Because if we did go public with it people would start asking questions, Poseidon answered, and let's just say that the few children that we did have together wound up with an untimely fate. Aphrodite was very confused at that statement. What do you mean they met untimely deaths, Aphrodite acts, scratching the back of her head. We couldn't find them, Poseidon explained, they weren't even in Tartarus. Artemis sighed, and began rubbing the bridge of her nose, she then looked at them in empathy. I know the feeling, Artemis said, everyone looked at her confused, Naruto wasn't my first child just the first one I could find. How many were there before Naruto, Athena acts, Artemis held up a single finger. Just one his name was Jeremiah, Artemis answered, a sad smile came across her face and Athena looked down. Yeah I remember how much I planned to spoil him, Athena remembered, getting that same look in her eyes. Aphrodite then began thinking, surprising ain't it, about how Poseidon had mentioned having children with Athena. How many children did you two have, Aphrodite asked innocently, but it caused tears to well up in Athena's eyes and Poseidon to look at the ground sadly. Three Polythemus, Jeremy, and Andrea, Poseidon answered, before he wrapped Athena in a comforting hug. What happened to them, Artemis asks. I don't know they just disappeared, Poseidon said sadly, then realization hit Artemis. The same thing happened to Jeremiah, Artemis stated, Athena, Aphrodite, and Poseidon all looked at her and began thinking back. Artemis's flashback, Artemis had just put Jeremiah down for his nap and had kissed his forehead when Zeus walked in and both Zeus and Jeremiah had disappeared. Artemis's flashback ends, Athena and Poseidon's flashback.
Polythemus had just been born and they told a select group of people to entrust their secret with, X. Zeus and Artemis. When they came to check on him he was gone. Fast forward 1500 years later, this time Poseidon and Athena had been extra careful and only brought Artemis along as the midwife for the birth of Jeremy. Artemis had picked the perfect spot where the two parents could watch her as she took the baby down to the ocean to have him cleaned. About 30 seconds later, a bright flash of light appeared and Jeremy was gone. 500 years later, this time Athena and Poseidon had selected the location and only told two people, Hades, though he didn't know they were having a baby, and Artemis, where they would birth their daughter Andrea. Hades had taken an extra special precaution and ordered that if any of his troops didn't defend Athena that he would personally send them to Tartarus himself. This time Artemis stood right in front of Athena as she cleaned the baby, but not even halfway through and Andrea had disappeared into thin air. Flashback over, it was then they all came to the same conclusion, Zeus had something to do with the disappearance of their children. At Camp Half-Blood, Naruto, for once in his life, felt content. He finally had a bed that was an actual bed and not a second hand cast off, to his great surprise he found an electric guitar, drums, a mic, and a bass in the corner of his room, a weapons rack that had swords, bows, and daggers on it, and a bathroom. At the least me and Talia will be able to get a band started, Naruto thought to himself, as he went to the electric guitar and began to learn how to play. After 30 minutes Naruto had the basics down so he went to go see Talia. With Talia, Talia was in cabin one looking everything over, and though the cabin was everything she ever dreamed, she felt sad. I wish whiskers were here right now, Talia thought, then she mentally berated herself, which she eventually turned to saying her thoughts out loud. I mean come on he's my friend I can't think of him like in a romantic sense, Talia said out loud, and this is about the time Naruto was standing at her door. I mean sure he's cute with those whisker marks, and that smile, and those deep blue eyes. Talia began to trail off about thinking how cute Naruto was, though she tried in vain to rid herself of that thought process. Glad you find me so adorable, said a voice, which could belong to none other than Naruto, which caused Talia to let out a, eep, and blush. WW Whiskers what are doing here, Talia acts, with a deep blush on her face. Well I was originally coming here to tell you we could start our own band, like we wanted, Naruto explained, but I was standing at your door and I couldn't help but hear all those things you said about me. Talia for her part became a stuttering mess, after she realized that Naruto had heard her confession, she then hatched the perfect idea for revenge. Yes but I still owe you don't I, Talia said seductively in Naruto's ear. I did don't know what you're talking about, Naruto said, in a very uncharacteristic stutter. I think you do whiskers, Talia cooed into his ear, the only question is do I pay my debt in your cabin or mine? Talia then began nipping at Naruto's ear, and she slowly kissed all six of his whisker marks, causing Naruto shudder. Naruto finally managed to kick her door shut, and turned the lock on the door, then he pulled her to his lips and kissed her like it was his last day on earth. With Annabeth, Annabeth was walking to cabin one to check on how Talia was settling in, and she happened to have a camera on her so that she take pictures like old times. When she tried to open the door she found that it was being incredibly stubborn. Funny Talia would never lock her door, Annabeth thought, she then tried the window to see what was going on. Imagine her surprise when she found her two best friends, in the whole world, in the middle of a very hot and heavy makeout session. Can anyone say blackmail, Annabeth thought, as she took a very rapid series of pictures. With Poseidon, Athena, and Artemis, Athena, Poseidon, and Artemis were pissed, to the point even Typhon would have gladly stayed 6,000 more years in his prison, at the fact that one Olympian they trusted above all others was the one who betrayed them the worst. When I get my hands on that lousy brother of mine, Poseidon said, in anger, he then blasted one of the many marble columns in the immediate area. Oh trust me I'm not that far behind, Artemis said, blasting another marble column. Hold on. Hold on, Athena said, we need to expose him before we do anything else. How do we do that, Artemis asks. Simple, Poseidon answered, we get him to spill his guts. How do we get him to do that, Artemis asks. You remember the bronze net we used, Poseidon asks, Athena and Artemis nodded, we're going to use it again. But how we got rid of it, Athena stated. I kept it around, Poseidon told them, producing the net, just in case. Upon seeing the net all three of the Olympians standing there smiled, a evil sadistic smile. At Camp Half-Blood, it was morning at Camp Half-Blood and it was a rude awakening at Cabin 1, 
when Chiron banging on the door. Talia was trying to roll out of bed when she felt a familiar person in the bed next to her. Naruto Uzumaki was cuddled up next to her, holding on for dear life. She had to find a way to wake him up, and answer Chiron's knocking before he broke the door. Talia leaned over and kissed Naruto on one of his whisker marks, Naruto smiled and loosened his grip. Talia quickly shimmed out of Naruto's grasp and answered the door. Yes Chiron, Talia acts, she soon regretted opening the door when she saw the look on Chiron's face. He then showed her a picture of her and Naruto in the middle of their makeout session. Looks like two people in a makeout session, Talia answered. Yes more apparently you and Mr. Naruto in the middle of a makeout session in a cabin alone, Chiron stated, emphasizing the alone. Is it? Talia asked, she took a closer look at it and realized it was, her and Naruto in the middle of a makeout session. Care to explain how this happened? Chiron asked, tapping his front left hoof like only a horse can. Don't know how it could have happened, Talia answered, while on the inside she was planning revenge on a certain daughter of Athena. I'll have my eye on you too, Chiron stated before he walked off. Talia sighed in relief and as she went to wake Naruto up she was immediately wrapped back into a hug. Well I guess there are worse places to be, Talia thought, as she snuggled close to Naruto and dozed off. I miss whiskers, Talia thought to herself, for the umpteenth time that night. Grover had been sent to a military academy and had dragged the rest of them along, on the grounds that there were two very powerful demigods at the academy. As it turned out there was some kind of homecoming thing going on and Grover came up with the bright idea for them to dance, Percy got Annabeth and Talia realized the one person she wanted to dance with wasn't there. I miss whiskers, Talia thought solemnly, with Naruto. Naruto was sitting as patiently as possible for an ADHD kid which wasn't that patiently. He was in a tree watching the door, while he had his clones watching the other entrances. I would get stuck on guard detail, Naruto thought to himself, I could be inside with Talia and probably stealing another kiss right now. Flashback. Naruto had just woken up around 12 pm and smiled, as he remembered the little makeout session he had with Talia. Imagine his surprise when he saw Talia snuggled up to him and holding on to him, almost as she was a ferret that if she let him go he would disappear. Naruto smiled and gave her a quick peck on the lips. Talia smiled in her sleep and pulled him closer. Not what I was expecting to happen, Naruto said out loud. He then tried something else, he kissed her on the lips like his life depended on it. Flashback end. Best time of my life, Naruto said out loud. It was then he smacked himself. When he saw a guy leaving the school with two children, I gotta pay more attention. With Talia, Talia was dancing with Grover, although very grudgingly, when she spotted two kids being escorted out of the gym by a guy that looked like he was in his late twenties. I spotted them, Talia told Grover. They then got Percy and Annabeth and ran to catch up to the man, who had spirited the two demigods away. When they finally caught up to him they were on the edge of a cliff overlooking the sea. The general will be most pleased, the man said, with a hint of glee in his voice. The others just looked at him confused, then they heard the strangest thing it sounded like someone playing a flute. The man was swaying back and forth to the music and it was then the mist surrounding him fell, revealing a manticore. When Talia turned and saw who was playing the music she saw none other than Naruto Uzumaki, with his eyes closed and playing the flute from memory. But instead of his usual blue and camo clothing he was wearing a black sleeveless turtleneck, black fingerless gloves with metal plates on the back, black baggy cargo pants, brown combat boots, and he had a strange weapon tied to his back. When Naruto was six feet from the manticore, he stopped playing his music and pulled out the weapon his back, revealing a blade in the shape of a crescent moon as black as night with red tribal marks running the length of it. Naruto swung the blade, decapitating the manticore in one strike, before he put it back on his back. He turned and looked at the two demigods and got down to their level and looked them in the eye. You two alright, Naruto asks, the two just nodded completely awestruck, what are your names? I'm Bianca D'Angelo, the girl told Naruto, and then pointed to the boy, and he's my brother Nico. I see well how about me and my friends take you guys to camp for special people like us, Naruto asks, explained to Bianca and Nico, who promptly nodded. It was then Artemis appeared, followed by her hunters. Naruto. Artemis acts in shock, what happened here? Manticore. Naruto answered, as though that would answer everything. Artemis nodded and turned to look at her hunters and she walked off, with her hunters close behind. Apollo seemed to appear next to them with a bright orange car. Yo. 
Apollo greeted like he was visiting old friends. Hello Uncle Apollo, Naruto greeted, although the greeting left something to be desired. Naruto then nudged Bianca and Nico forward. Can you get the others to camp? Naruto asked his uncle, me and Spikey have got some business to take of. Apollo was at first confused at what Naruto meant, and was about to ax, when a flash of realization hit him. I'll get right on that, Apollo said, giving Naruto a understanding wink. Talia however looked a little confused, before she saw Apollo's car turn into minivan and he took off with everyone else on board. Um Naruto how are we supposed to get back, Talia acts, slightly confused. Naruto gave her a, follow me, hand motion, about two minutes later they were outside the school gates and in the visitor's parking lot when she saw a midnight black Yamaha FZ600 with a tribal wolf running across one side of it and a full moon with another tribal wolf howling at it. You like it, Naruto acts, with a smile on his face, all Talia could do was nod, and then a question entered her mind. Whiskers where are you going to put your sword, Talia acts, pointing to his crescent moon blade. Easy, Naruto answered, before he pulled at the hilt revealing the blade could separate into two pieces and putting the pieces into holsters on the sides of the bike, he tossed her a helmet with a strange design it looked like symbols for something but she didn't know. What's this mean, Talia acts, pointing to the symbols. It means, child of lightning, Naruto explained, he then pointed to the symbols on his helmet, and this set of kanji means, maelstrom of the moon. Talia nodded, although she didn't really understand, and got on the bike shortly after Naruto. You might want to hold on, Naruto warned her, she took the warning to heart and held on tight, as Naruto turned his bike on and gunned the engine. With Artemis, Artemis was furious to say the least. She couldn't believe her own father, the one she trusted above everyone else, had stabbed her in the back like he did. I want you all to go to camp half-blood, Artemis ordered, they all nodded but they also looked nervous. Yes Lady Artemis, her first lieutenant, Zoe Nightshade replied, she gave the hunters the, follow me, signal and they headed in the general direction of Camp Half-Blood. Now it's time to meet up with Poseidon and Athena, Artemis thought, and she teleported to their secret meeting place. At Camp Half-Blood, Naruto had just gotten back and dropped Talia off at her cabin and was ready for a warm shower and some much needed sleep. But when he walked through the door he had to dodge a dagger flying straight for his head, he then had to roll right as arrow speeded towards him. Will you stop for two minutes, Naruto shouted, dodging a dagger that was a little too close for comfort. What are you doing in our cabin? Axe a girl in a silver hunting outfit and a silver circlet. Naruto looked confused at the people who were in his cabin. I live here, Naruto pointed out, or did you not notice? Naruto acts as he pointed out everything that went into a guy's room, right down to the clothes hastily packed into the dresser. But the girl with the circlet just shook her head. Nope, she said. This cabin belongs to Artemis and she has no children. Then mom obviously didn't give you the memo, Naruto stated. Don't you dare refer to Lady Artemis as your mother, the leader said, through ground teeth. She is, Naruto said, rolling his eyes. The leader of the group leapt at him with a dagger, ready to stab Naruto. Naruto just sidestepped and chopped her in the back of the neck effectively coing her. If you need me I'll be in cabin 1, Naruto told them, as he walked to cabin 1. Meanwhile in an unknown location, Luke Castellan was shaking in his boots, which was no small feat, at the sight of the person in front of him. Is everything ready? The figure acts, all Luke could do was nod, good if we can get the child of the huntress out of the way then the child of lightning will join us. And if she doesn't, Luke acts, the figure on the ground chuckled. She won't live to see another sunrise, the figure answered and Luke walked out of the room for the first time wondering if he had made the right choice in betraying his friends. At Camp Half-Blood the next morning, Naruto had just woken up, from a Talia-centered dream, and was going to sit at the Artemis table when he thought better of it. It was then Chiron made announcement. Warriors, heroes in honor of our guests the Hunters of Artemis, Chiron announced waving his hand at the Hunters, we're going to do something different, instead of the usual game of capture the flag they suggested we do a two-on-two -two tournament. All the campers groaned, because usually when the hunters suggested something they knew they could win at it. I expect to see a good representation of Camp Half-Blood so I expect no less than 10 people from Camp Half-Blood to sign up, Chiron kept announcing, the sign-up sheet will be on at the big house. A tournament at Camp Half-Blood, what will happen? Who will Naruto be partnered with? Vote and find out. I miss whiskers, Talia thought to herself, for the umpteenth time that night. 
Grover had been sent to a military academy and had dragged the rest of them along, on the grounds that there were two very powerful demigods at the academy. As it turned out there was some kind of homecoming thing going on and Grover came up with the bright idea for them to dance. Percy got Annabeth and Talia realized the one person she wanted to dance with wasn't there. I miss whiskers, Talia thought solemnly, with Naruto. Naruto was sitting as patiently as possible for an ADHD kid which wasn't that patiently. He was in a tree watching the door, while he had his clones watching the other entrances. I would get stuck on guard detail, Naruto thought to himself, I could be inside with Talia and probably stealing another kiss right now. Flashback. Naruto had just woken up around 12 p.m. and smiled, as he remembered the little makeout session he had with Talia. Imagine his surprise when he saw Talia snuggled up to him and holding on to him, almost as she was a ferret that if she let him go he would disappear. Naruto smiled and gave her a quick peck on the lips. Talia smiled in her sleep and pulled him closer. Not what I was expecting to happen, Naruto said out loud. He then tried something else, he kissed her on the lips like his life depended on it. Flashback end. Best time of my life, Naruto said out loud. It was then he smacked himself, when he saw a guy leaving the school with two children, I gotta pay more attention. With Talia, Talia was dancing with Grover, although very grudingly, when she spotted two kids being escorted out of the gym by a guy that looked like he was in his late twenties. I spotted them, Talia told Grover. They then got Percy and Annabeth and ran to catch up to the man, who had spirited the two demigods away. When they finally caught up to him they were on the edge of a cliff overlooking the sea. The general will be most pleased, the man said, with a hint of glee in his voice. The others just looked at him confused, then they heard the strangest thing it sounded like someone playing a flute. The man was swaying back and forth to the music and it was then the mist surrounding him fell, revealing a manticore. When Talia turned and saw who was playing the music she saw none other than Naruto Uzumaki, with his eyes closed and playing the flute from memory. But instead of his usual blue and camo clothing he was wearing a black sleeveless turtleneck, black fingerless gloves with metal plates on the back, black baggy cargo pants, brown combat boots, and he had a strange weapon tied to his back. When Naruto was six feet from the manticore, he stopped playing his music and pulled out the weapon his back, revealing a blade in the shape of a crescent moon as black as night with red tribal marks running the length of it. Naruto swung the blade, decapitating the manticore in one strike, before he put it back on his back. He turned and looked at the two demigods and got down to their level and looked them in the eye. You two all right, Naruto asked. The two just nodded completely awestruck. What are your names? I'm Bianca D'Angelo, the girl told Naruto, and then pointed to the boy, and he's my brother Nico. I see well how about me and my friends take you guys to camp for special people like us, Naruto asked, explained to Bianca and Nico, who promptly nodded. It was then Artemis appeared, followed by her hunters. Naruto. Artemis acts in shock, what happened here? Manticore. Naruto answered, as though that would answer everything. Artemis nodded and turned to look at her hunters and she walked off, with her hunters close behind. Apollo seemed to appear next to them with a bright orange car. Yo. Apollo greeted like he was visiting old friends. Hello Uncle Apollo, Naruto greeted, although the greeting left something to be desired. Naruto then nudged Bianca and Nico forward. Can you get the others to camp? Naruto asked his uncle, me and Spikey have got some business to take of. Apollo was at first confused at what Naruto meant, and was about to ax, when a flash of realization hit him. I'll get right on that, Apollo said, giving Naruto a understanding wink. Talia however looked a little confused, before she saw Apollo's car turn into minivan and he took off with everyone else on board. Um Naruto how are we supposed to get back, Talia asked, slightly confused. Naruto gave her a, follow me, hand motion, about two minutes later they were outside the school gates and in the visitor's parking lot when she saw a midnight black Yamaha FZ600 with a tribal wolf running across one side of it and a full moon with another tribal wolf howling at it. You like it, Naruto asked. With a smile on his face, all Talia could do was nod, and then a question entered her mind. Whiskers where are you going to put your sword, Talia asked, pointing to his crescent moon blade. Easy, Naruto answered, before he pulled at the hilt revealing the blade could separate into two pieces and putting the pieces into holsters on the sides of the bike. He tossed her a helmet with a strange design it looked like symbols for something but she didn't know. What's this mean, Talia asked, pointing to the symbols. It means, child of lightning, Naruto explained, 
He then pointed to the symbols on his helmet, and this set of kanji means, maelstrom of the moon. Talia nodded, although she didn't really understand, and got on the bike shortly after Naruto. You might want to hold on, Naruto warned her, she took the warning to heart and held on tight, as Naruto turned his bike on and gunned the engine. With Artemis, Artemis was furious to say the least. She couldn't believe her own father, the one she trusted above everyone else, had stabbed her in the back like he did. I want you all to go to Camp Half-Blood, Artemis ordered, they all nodded but they also looked nervous. Yes Lady Artemis, her first lieutenant, Zoe Nightshade replied, she gave the hunters the, follow me, signal and they headed in the general direction of Camp Half-Blood. Now it's time to meet up with Poseidon and Athena, Artemis thought, and she teleported to their secret meeting place. At Camp Half-Blood, Naruto had just gotten back and dropped Talia off at her cabin and was ready for a warm shower and some much needed sleep. But when he walked through the door he had to dodge a dagger flying straight for his head, he then had to roll right as arrow speeded towards him. Will you stop for two minutes, Naruto shouted, dodging a dagger that was a little too close for comfort. What are you doing in our cabin? Axe a girl in a silver hunting outfit and a silver circlet. Naruto looked confused at the people who were in his cabin. I live here, Naruto pointed out, or did you not notice? Naruto acts as he pointed out everything that went into a guy's room, right down to the clothes hastily packed into the dresser. But the girl with the circlet just shook her head. Nope, she said, this cabin belongs to Artemis and she has no children. Then mom obviously didn't give you the memo, Naruto stated. Don't you dare refer to Lady Artemis as your mother, the leader said, through ground teeth. She is, Naruto said, rolling his eyes. The leader of the group leapt at him with a dagger, ready to stab Naruto. Naruto just sidestepped and chopped her in the back of the neck effectively coing her. If you need me I'll be in cabin 1, Naruto told them, as he walked to cabin 1. Meanwhile in an unknown location, Luke Castellan was shaking in his boots, which was no small feat, at the sight of the person in front of him. Is everything ready? The figure acts, all Luke could do was nod, good if we can get the child of the huntress out of the way then the child of lightning will join us. And if she doesn't, Luke acts, the figure on the ground chuckled. She won't live to see another sunrise, the figure answered, and Luke walked out of the room for the first time wondering if he had made the right choice in betraying his friends. At Camp Half-Blood the next morning, Naruto had just woken up, from a Talia-centered dream, and was going to sit at the Artemis table when he thought better of it. It was then Chiron made announcement. Warriors, heroes in honor of our guests the Hunters of Artemis, Chiron announced waving his hand at the Hunters, we're going to do something different, instead of the usual game of capture the flag they suggested we do a two-on-two -two tournament. All the campers groaned, because usually when the Hunters suggested something they knew they could win at it. I expect to see a good representation of Camp Half-Blood so I expect no less than 10 people from Camp Half-Blood to sign up, Chiron kept announcing, the sign-up sheet will be on at the big house. A tournament at Camp Half-Blood, what will happen? Who will Naruto be partnered with? Vote and find out. Naruto and Talia had just got done signing up for the tournament and had agreed to be partners, but all their planning was ruined when Zoe Nightshade walked up and scoffed at them. Is this boy the best you could find? Zoe acts scornfully. Knocked you out didn't I? Naruto acts, not even looking up from what he and Talia were doing. Zoe got mad and tried to attack Naruto, only to be met with a massive shock from Talia. Who's next? Talia acts, in a malicious tone, the Naruto put a hand on her shoulder effectively stopping her. Talia save it for the tournament, Naruto said, before sending Zoe a glare, next time I'll let her kick your ass. Zoe just snorted and walked off muttering about insolent boys who don't know what they're talking about. After another three hours of planning they went and sparred, with Naruto winning most of the time. Okay I think I have a plan that may help us win, Naruto said, before adding this depressing note at least the first round. What, Talia said, looking at Naruto curiously. Naruto then pulled out a piece of paper and began drawing, after six minutes of drawing and checking every little detail he showed her. Okay you and me are here, Naruto said pointing to two circles the enemy is here. Naruto pointed to two X's on the drawing and then began explaining the strategy to Tyler who would nod occasionally. After 10 minutes of explaining the strategy Naruto folded up the piece of paper and was about to walk off when Talia pulled him down and kissed him. With Artemis, Athena, and Poezidon, when is she going to get here, Athena almost shouted, while Poezidon just smiled. 
Soon Athena, Poesidon said, admiring his soon-to-be-not-so-secret girlfriend. Athena continued pacing occasionally sending a coy smile to Poesidon, that promised all that they would do when she got her vow revoked. Poesidon grinned and went to kiss his girlfriend when Artemis appeared, who quickly wished she hadn't. Needless to say Athena and Poesidon had enough deceni to look sheepish. I'd hate to see what you two are like after this over, Artemis stated, before getting to business, Poesidon you bring the net? Of course, Poesidon said, producing the net, the only challenge will be catching him. Nope that's easy, because he sits on his throne almost 24-7, Athena stated simply, the trouble is going to be getting him in the net. Artemis sat and thought that over and over till at last she came to a solution that was simple and effective. Agreeing on the plan they immediately got to work. Day of the tournament, Naruto and Talia were standing at one of the entrances to the arena waiting for their name to be called. How these matches were set up was like WWE a tag team would have an entrance theme and if that team made it to the last round then a highlight reel would show what they did to their opponents. It took him and Talia a few minutes, and a little convincing, but they finally decided on a theme and were getting ready for their first opponents. When their door finally opened Naruto took his crescent moon blade and yanked on it, turning it into two shark fin shaped blades, and Talia readied her spear and her aegis shield. This is war and it's on tonight so get up and fight. You had all your liiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiiii
followed by Poezidon stepping forward and glaring at his brother. I want you to swear on the river Styx that you'll annul mine and Amphrite's marriage, Poezidon demanded. I swear on the river Styx that I will annul the marriage between you and Amphirite, Zeus said, thunder boomed again in the distance. Artemis just smiled and just stood there tapping her fingers against her arm before she finally thought of something that would make them all happy, well Athena and Poezidon at least. I want you to swear on the river Styx that when Poezidon's marriage to Amphirite is dissolved and when Athena's vow is revoked that you will allow the two get married if they so choose, Artemis demanded, earning a shocked expression from Zeus. All right I swear on the river Styx that if Poezidon and Athena so choose to get married then I will allow it, Zeus said dumbfounded, while Poezidon and Athena were just waiting for the day they would be able to get married. Well one problem solved, Artemis thought, before thinking, now I just need to make sure Naruto hasn't torn the hunters a new one. With Naruto, Naruto had managed to revive Talia and they were celebrating their first victory in the tournament in the waiting area when the bane of Naruto's existence, Zoe Nightshade, decided to make her a preance. You got lucky boy, Zoe said scornfully before turning to turning to Talia, you can still join the hunter's daughter of Zeus, just abandon this boy. Talia looked between Naruto and Zoe, Naruto with worry and Zoe with confusion on what to do. When she looked at Naruto one more time she saw him motion his hand toward Zoe and smiled at Talia, and that immediately cinched her decision. My answer is the same as it was last time, Talia answered and to make sure Zoe got the message she repeated her answer, no. Zoe was shocked at the refusal and Naruto was grinning like the Cheshire cat, then it was Naruto's turn to be surprised when Talia turned around and kissed Naruto right on the lips with a sense of urgency. Needless to say Zoe was disgusted and Naruto was more than willing to return the kiss. Zoe stormed out of the room disgusted beyond belief, not that Naruto and Talia noticed or anything. At first Talia was doing it to help hammer it into Zoe's head that she refused to join the hunters but she got so lost in the kiss that she found she couldn't stop. When they finally broke for air Talia came to a conclusion that, to her, was both welcomed and scary. She couldn't live without Naruto Uzumaki her best friend that she couldn't live without no matter what. Ah how cute, said a high-pitched voice off to the side, which caused Naruto and Talia to blush. HH hello Lady Aphrodite, greeted Talia sheepishly. Naruto was looking off to the side with a bright red blush on his face, while Aphrodite was acting like a kid in a candy store. Your relationship is just like Percy and Annabeth, Aphrodite said gleefully, neither one of you wants to admit it. Aphrodite leave them alone said another voice, which was Artemis, and Naruto I'm surprised with you you haven't torn my hunters a new one yet. Don't worry mother I'll do that soon, Naruto said with a cold glint came to his eyes as he and Talia got ready to take on their next opponents. Naruto's mom, Sarutobi answered, and for the first time since Kakashi had known the third, he shivered in fear. I haven't given Konoha the full story, Sarutobi said as he looked out the window, Kashina Uzumaki never really existed she was someone I made up to cover up who Naruto's mother really was. And who was Naruto's real mother, Kakashi asked slightly confused. Tell me Kakashi what do you know of Artemis, Serutobi asked calmly. Thanks, 